so after you logged into your hive you're going to be looking at your dashboard um, this network is pretty robust and has a lot of rooms uh, yours may look similar or may only have a couple um, what we're going to be doing is creating new control groups or rooms that we're then going to assign uh, the different relay blocks that we just wired uh, to those rooms. We're going to assign the appliance types as um, irrigation and then we're going to set some schedules and we're going to basically just close the loop on everything we did upstairs hardware wise. So we've got everything set up, uh, everything's wired, now we're just going to go and close the loop on that in the software. Um, so zones one and two have already been created um, and we're going to go ahead and do three, four, and five. Um, the way that you do that right away is you go up to the top right and click on the settings. In there you're going to have your rooms manager. Uh, in the rooms manager, uh, this is where you have all the different rooms that you've created in your network. Um, in our case, we're going to be creating one called Bloom 3 Zone 3. Um, we're going to want it to start on the same day so that the day cycle is matching on that specific dashboard and we're also going to do some other things like setting the lighting schedule to the same one that is currently being used in Bloom 3 Zone 1 and the same lighting schedule is duplicated in Bloom 3 Zone 2. So in essence all rooms that have the beginning Bloom 3 would be sharing the exact same lighting schedule because that's when the lights turn on in that specific room and so in the software we want to make sure that any new rooms we're creating or new control groups uh, that exist in a room that already has a lighting schedule you go ahead and make them the same so moving right ahead so I have all three of my rooms created um, you can see them here we've got zone 3 we've got zone 4 and zone 5 um, the start times are a bit wonky, but that's okay. I can always uh, fix that. And the way to do that is by just editing the room. This one's a lot easier to fix. Um, basically, I wanted this date, right? So I'm going to copy that, and on 3, I'm just going to paste it and then save it. And then on four, where it's also incorrect, I'm going to paste it and then save it. And then on five, I'm going to paste it and save it. Um, and then go up here and click on done. And now they all have the same start time as Bloom 3 Zone 1 and Zone 2. All right, so that's the first step done. Now we're just going to go into each of the rooms on the dashboard and correct the lighting schedules so that everything is in accordance with previous lighting schedules that were there. So I'm going into Bloom 3, Zone 3. I'm going into my lighting control section. And in this particular room, they have we have lights coming on um, at 1 and going off at 1. The way to change your lighting schedule is to just click on the little padlock. Once you have that, the little wheel spins around and it's super easy to manipulate at that point. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do it there and then lock it. I'm going to put it on a 12-hour cycle and at the moment that's basically all I'm going to do. This is important so that when you're looking at data in the room's details page for this zone, that when the lights are on the data is showing lights on and when the lights are off they're showing lights off for example like in this room this light period is obviously the lights on and this is the lights off and so the way the system knows this is by the time you set there in the lighting controls and so we're going to go ahead and do that um, going back to our zones of irrigation to zone four because we just did three we're going to go to lighting controls here. So again, just some simple procedural setups that you need to walk through when you're setting up your zones. Um, we're going to go back to the dashboard there. Uh, once you lock them, it kind of saves them. So uh, we're going to go zone 5 and lighting controls here. 
And then you're also going to be setting schedules independently in each of these, and we'll, we'll cover that in a minute. So now we're going to go into the device manager section of the software. Uh, the same way you get to the room manager is the same way you get to the device manager. You click up on setting and then click on device manager and then that will take you to here. Um, as I mentioned before, we already had two zones set up already. Zone 1 and zone 2. If you see that over here on the left hand side. Uh, this is where your rooms are going to populate and any devices assigned to those rooms are going to populate underneath the name. Um, they have these little arrows you can push on them and they'll expand your list or, or hide it. Um, in this case I've hidden all these other rooms because I don't need um, to confuse anyone with looking at that. Uh, for the time being uh, we, at, we currently have circuit one. If you see it here it's highlighted. It, the appliance type that has been assigned to it correctly is an irrigation pump. Um, it's showing here, um, it's showing here that it is also circuit one, and and it's also showing that it is in the correct room. Uh, so somebody previously did that. We're going to do that for zones three through five. I just kind of wanted to establish what a correct setup is. Um, so you've got your your room, and you've got your circuit. Um, and you have the um, appliance type assigned as an irrigation pump. Um, and so that's basically it. We're now going to go into Bloom 3 Zone 2. And you can see here on this particular circuit we have uh, Circuit 2. Um, and that is on the first relay block on the, on the DCC8. Um, so those are the first two solenoids in series. And those are the first two that have already been assigned as an appliance type irrigation pump and have been assigned to room Bloom 3 Zone 2 in this case overheat. Um, I don't know if you remember we had more we had five total zones for a Bloom 3 configuration so right now we're in Bloom 3 Zone 3 and so we need to go find uh, where the available circuit is for this DCC8 in most instances, uh, when an appliance type has not been assigned to a control circuit, it's going to live in the unassigned list. Um, the important thing to jot down or just have an, in hand is the last four digits of the radio ID of the control device you're looking for in the unassigned list. So in this case, we already have a DCC8 circuit 2, like I mentioned before, and circuit 1. We can go ahead and rename the parent device name here to something like this. I'm going to go ahead and leave the radio ID first, and I'm going to say uh, Bloom 3. Since this device is going to be living inside of that room, I can't necessarily name it by zone or by circuit because this is the parent device name. Um, now, I could name this circuit Zone 1 if I wanted to I could call it zone 1 for circuit 1 and now that would be the correct way to name this device and so why that's important is you see here now what's happened on this other circuit here it's changed the parent name to the the name that we gave it and now this circuit 2 still says circuit 2 but we can make that say zone 2 right because that's in zone 2 bloom 3 bloom 3 zone 2 all right and so now we're going to go ahead and set up the other zones with dcc8 circuits in them um, and the best way to do that and the reason why you name things uh, in the parent device name is so that we can go ahead and do a search using the search feature for this device now this is a really handy tool because what it does is it takes everything in your network and just applies the search that you gave it. Um, so it's a good idea just to kind of go ahead and name things accordingly so that you can find them in the system quickly. So in this case, we've got, we've got circuit 3, that's unassigned, circuit 4, and circuit 5. We're going to go ahead and assign those to 
bloom three zone three. Um, we're gonna call that zone three on the circuit itself. Three. This is also important because when notifications take place in your system, um, when it's referencing certain devices in your network, it's gonna sometimes recall these names that you give certain devices just to kind of give you a better idea. Um, so now we're going to go to circuit four. We're going to go Bloom 3 zone four, and we're going to name this zone four. And then we're going to go to five, and we're going to assign that to zone five. Call it zone five. All right, now we got all our rooms, uh, all of our DCC8 circuits assigned to the rooms that they need to be assigned to. Um, now we're going to go a step further and assign the appliance type. So we know these are all solenoids, so we're going to go ahead and call them an irrigation pump on zone 3. And then we're going to go to zone 4, assign that as an irrigation pump. Takes a little second. And then zone five, also in bloom three, we're gonna assign appliance type irrigation pump. Looks like it's taking a second. All right. So that is basically how we're gonna go and set up the DCC8. We're naming it and we're also assigning circuits to rooms, we're naming the circuits according to what zone they are in. We're also changing the parent device name so that we can easily find it. Um, you know, we've used the search feature here to locate the unassigned circuit so that we could easily route them to the room. And that's basically what we're going to do in the device manager. Now let's go ahead and set up the irrigation schedules. Set the schedules by going straight to the irrigation controls. As you can see, we don't have any schedules set, um, but we're going to go ahead and get those set up now. Uh, I won't bother showing the other zones uh, and how to set schedules in them um, because the way you would set them for the other zones is how we're going to show you now. So we won't need to go through those, but you basically need to just click on this plus symbol here. And then that pulls up a schedule. Um, by default, it gives you straight away to the time. Um, you can type in these fields. Um, I know exactly when I want these to start. So at 2.06 PM. And I want the duration. Uh, to get that open, you just click on it. Um, I want the duration to be two minutes. And then you hit the check mark to confirm, and then save. So that basically saves that schedule, um, and that's when the DCC8 is going to irrigate on that solenoid in zone three. All right, we're gonna go ahead and add another one. You just hit the plus symbol and go down the line to, the, to your desired irrigation times. Again, this is the on time, and then we're setting the duration and confirming it and then we're saving the changes. And then the last one I'm gonna set is here. And you can type in these fields and check mark to confirm. Click in the area for duration. This one I want to be one minute. All right, and so now I have all my schedules important thing, you had to hit save changes. If you don't and you try to leave the page, it's going to ask you if you want to. Um, that's a good indication that you probably haven't saved, so you want to hit save changes and that's, that's it in a nutshell, setting up irrigation schedules.